talk about the JavaScript reduce array method. It's almost definitely the most confusing JavaScript array method. One, it's called reduce, which isn't very clear. We have other methods like filter, push, pop, which are very clear into what their action is. Filter, filters down an array. Push, pushes a new item into the array. Pop, gets rid of the last item out of the array. Reduce, what do I do with reduce? <laughs> Let's reduce the confusion in this tutorial. Based on just the name alone, you might think, this is an array method that I can use to reduce my array. Say I have an array of numbers and I want to get the total of all of those numbers. You definitely can use reduce for that. However, reduce is so much more than that. And in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about tons of different things that you can do with this reduce array method. The other reason why reduce is very confusing is because the function that it takes in has two variables. And lots of documentation, these variables are called accumulator and current value. I really find that these variable names are confusing in themselves. It's hard to understand which one's which, how they come into play in the function. We're gonna walk through exactly what's going on under the covers while we're using this reduce method. The first example that we'll run through using reduce, we'll be taking an array of numbers, adding up all those numbers and returning the total. I'm gonna to create a variable called total. And then I'll call reduce on the numbers array that I have set above. So numbers reduce. And inside of this reduce function, the two variables that I'll be accessing will be called accumulator and current value. And then I'll set an initial value of zero. Before I return anything or go through any of the actual logic, I want to walk through what the reduce method is actually doing. Like I said earlier, accumulator and current value are really confusing. They're really what tripped me up when I was learning reduce. What's accumulator and what's current value? So what we'll do in here is do console.log. So when I run this file, we see zero as that initial accumulator, and then we see a bunch of undefines. But then for current value, we can see it's all of the items within the array. So the reduce method gets called for each one of the items within the given array. One of the reasons why reduce is confusing because for things like map and filter, the first variable that you access in that function is current value. But in reduce, it's the second variable. What's accumulator? Why is it undefined? The reason why it's undefined here is because we're not actually returning anything yet. Accumulator is just what you returned the last time the function was run. So say you're at the zero index, which for this would be running it for the value of five. We have that initial value of zero, but then since we're not returning anything, it gets set to undefined. And now for the rest, we have undefined. One way to show this is if I just return one, run this again, we'll see that the accumulator is one. And that's because we're always returning one. We have no logic right in here. To find the total of all of these numbers, the way we would write that would be writing accumulator plus current value. So the first time it's run, we have the initial value of zero and we have current value five because this is for the zero index in this array. What we're returning is zero plus five. And then you can see the next time this function gets run, accumulator is now five. So then we're doing five plus 10 which then goes to 15 plus three, 18, and so on. All accumulator is, is just what was returned the last time this function was run. And of course, at the end of it, accumulator is set to the last run. What I'm gonna show here is just console.log. Here we can see the total of 42 is shown, which is the sum of all of these numbers. Another really awesome thing that we can do with reduce is find the minimum and the maximum in the array. We have an array of dogs. Each of these items is an object with a name and an age. We can use reduce to find the youngest dog in this array. And of course, that'll be whichever one has the smallest age. First, we'll create a variable called youngest dog. And then we'll call the reduce method on the dogs array. So dogs.reduce and we'll have our accumulator or current value. I won't set an initial value for this. The initial value will just be the first item in this array. All we'll need to do is compare each age, and then if the age is smaller than the previous one, 
we'll set that equal to the accumulator. The first thing I'm going to do is const.log accumulator and then current value. Since we don't have initial value set here, the initial value will be the first item in the array, which for this is EV at age six. When we come into this function the first time, accumulator will be set to EV. So what we want to write here is an if statement saying, if the next item in the array is less than the one before it, then we wanna overwrite accumulator. So what we'll write here is if current value dot age is less than accumulator dot age, then we'll return current value. This is really the core of our logic because if we go into the next thing, if it's less than, then we're gonna override accumulator. However, if we don't go into this if statement, at this point, we're actually gonna be in a little bit of trouble. So if I just quickly run this, I'll show you what I mean. Right away, we'll get this error because we didn't return anything. The second time this is run, accumulator is undefined. So you can see here. So when we try to access accumulator.age, that won't work since accumulator is undefined. What you need to do that's really important is return accumulator. If whatever value you're at is not less than accumulator, we want to keep accumulator at its current value. So we'll return accumulator. So if I run this one more time, it'll work appropriately, but this is still just constant logging each of these instances. But then I'm gonna just constant log this dog. And then I'll show you that this, the, now the youngest dog is set to dock at age three. And if we wanted to find the maximum age of dog, we would do this really the same exact way. We just flipped this to be greater than, run it again, we'll get the maximum age. Why is flipping it going to work? It's because what we're doing is the exact same thing. We're comparing each current value based on the previously set accumulated value and seeing if that age is greater than the accumulated age, then we'll reset accumulator to be whatever we are at. We have an array here called breakfast foods. We have a bunch of different items within breakfast foods. We wanted to create an object that had each breakfast food along with the amount of times that each breakfast food occurred in the array. So let's call this variable occurrences. And I'm gonna call reduce on breakfast foods. It's accumulator and current value. And then our initial value for this one is actually going to be an empty object. So the way that we're gonna do this is using spread operator. I haven't covered spread operator yet, but I'm going to very soon. And it's one of the handiest things in JavaScript. You can create a shallow copy of any object. And in this case, we're gonna create a copy of accumulator every time we return so that we have whatever object that we previously returned. And then we can just add on top of that to create this occurrences object. So what I'm gonna write here is return, again, I'm gonna use the spread operator. So three dots, so dot, and then I'll do accumulator. After you declare a certain portion of an object, you can then override any values that you already set inside of accumulator. So then I'm either gonna create or tack on to whatever I had previously set in this object. The way I create a key based on a variable name is actually to put it in a square brackets. So square brackets and then current value and then that colon. And then here is where I either set the amount or add on to the amount of times that it's occurred in this array. Typically we use dot notation, right? So typically we would do something like act.eggs if there was a key inside of your object called eggs. However, if you're using a variable, what you do inside of here it would be do act of current value. So say we're still referencing that eggs, if eggs already exists, we're going to be getting the value of accumulator dot eggs and so on, like dot pancakes, dot whatever it may be. So this will grab it if it's already been set, but then I'm gonna say or zero. So what this piece of code is saying is grab the value of that key if it already exists, say it's already at one or whatever it may be, grab that value. But if it doesn't exist, let's set it equal to zero. And then we need to record this instance that we found of, of this item. So we would actually have to add one. Another thing I can do here to help us is what we've been doing all along. I have this little console. 
And then I'll just console.log occurrences. Now let's run this. The first time we come into here, accumulator is set to that object, the empty object, and it's saying the current value is x. Second time we come into here, we actually have already set x to equal one, and then the current value is pancakes. The second time, x is one, pancakes is one, current value is x. And then we see when we go into here, we're doing what we said earlier, which is accessing accumulator, dot eggs, which is already at one, plus another instance of eggs. And that's how we then come to eggs to equal two. And so on, we do that for each one of the items. And then we come out with this beautiful object called occurrences, which has the occurrences of each item, how many times that they have shown up in that original array. If you like my channel, please like and subscribe. There's so much more that I have, tons of tutorials about JavaScript, React, etc. And I make a lot of silly little jokes along the way. I apologize for most of it. So I'll see you next Monday. Thank <laughs> you.